then happily dragged our weary way down the long and crooked streets of our lives, past all kinds of walls and fences made of rotting wood, man wood, brick, concrete, iron railings. We have never given all thought to what lies behind them. We have never tried to penetrate them with our vision or our understanding. But there is where the Gulag country begins, right next to us, two yards away from us. In addition, we have failed to notice an enormous number of closely fitted, well-disguised doors and gates in these fences. All those gates were prepared for us, every last one. And all of a sudden the fateful gate swings quickly open, and four white male hands, unaccustomed to physical labor but nonetheless strong and tenacious, grab us by the leg, arm, collar, hat, ear, and drag us in like a sack, and the gate behind us, the gate to our past life, is slammed shut once and for all. That's all there is to it. You were arrested, and you'll find nothing better to respond with than a lamb-like bleed. Me. What for? That's what arrest is. It's a blinding flash and a blow which shifts the present instantly into the past and the impossible into omnipotent actuality. That's all. And neither for the first hour nor for the first day will you be able to grasp anything else. Except that in your desperation the fake circus mean you're going to do it, it's a mistake. They'll set things right. And everything which is by now comprised in the traditional, even literary, image of an arrest will pile up and take shape, not in your own disordered memory, but in what your family and your neighbors in your apartment remember, the sharp nighttime ring or the rude knock at the door. The insolent entrance of the unlike jackboots of the unsleeping state security operatives. The frightened and proud civilian witness at their back. And what function does this civilian witness serve? The victim doesn't even dare think about it and the operatives don't remain. Arrest I-5. Here, but that's what the regulations call for. And so he has to sit there all night long and sign in the morning point one for the witness. Dirt from his bed, it is torture too to go out night after night to help arrest his own neighbors and acquaintances. The traditional image of arrest is also trembling hands packing for the victim a change of underwear, a piece of soap, something to eat, and no one knows what is needed, what is permitted, what clothes are best to wear, and the security agents keep in. Corrupting and hurrying you, you don't need anything. They'll feed you there, it's warm there, it's all lies. They keep hurrying you to frighten you. The traditional image of arrest is also what happens afterward, when the poor victim has been taken away. It is an alien, brutal, and crushing force totally dominating the apartment for hours on. And, a breaking, ripping open, pulling from the walls, emptying things from wardrobes and desks onto the floor, shaking, dumping out, and ripping apart piling up mountains of litter on the floor. And the crunch of things being trampled beneath jackboots. And nothing is sacred in the surf. During the arrest of the locomotive engineer in Ocean, a tiny coffin stood in his room containing the body of his newly dead child. The jurist dumped the child's body out of the coffin and searched it. They shake sick people out of their sick beds, and they unwind bandages to search beneath them. Point two. Doc. Nothing is so stupid as to be inadmissible during a search. For example, they seized from the antiquarian Chetro pen a certain number of pages of Sardis decrees, 
Lucky Whip was a tree on ending the war with Napoleon, on the formation of the Holy Alliance, and a proclamation of public prayers against cholera during the epidemic of 1830. From our greatest expert on Tibet, Vox Vital, they confiscated ancient Tibetan manuscripts of great value, and it took the pupils of the deceased scholar 30 years to wrest them from the KGB. When the Orientalist next to us, 1. The regulation, purposeless in itself, derives, and, and, recalls, from that, strange time when the citizenry not only was supposed to but actually dared to verify the actions of the police. 2. When in 1937 they wiped out Drive, Kazakov's Institute, the Commission broke up the jars containing the lice sales developed by him, even though patients who had been cured and others still being treated rushed around them, begging them to preserve the miraculous medicine. According to the official version, the lice tapes were supposed to be poisoned. In that case, why should they not have been kept as material evidence? 6. I, the Gulag Archipelago. Arrested, they grabbed tangled manuscripts and 25 years later the deceased victim was posthumously awarded a Lenin Prize for deciphering them. From Carter they took his archive of the Minise Ostiacs and vetoed the alphabet and vocabulary he had developed for this people in a small nationality was thereby left without any written language. It would take a long time to describe all this in educated speech, the words. A folk saying about the search which covers the subject, they are looking for something which was never put there. They carry off whatever they have seized, but sometimes they compel the arrested individual to carry it. Thus Nina Alexandrovna Palchinskaya hauled over her shoulder a bag filled with the papers and letters of her eternally busy and active husband, the late great Russian engineer, carrying it into their mall, once and for all, forever. For those left behind after the arrest there is the long tail end of a wrecked and devastated life. And he attempts to go and deliver food parcels. But from all...